Okay, next stop, master, 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 master. This guy's been waiting for me for quite a while, so it'll be nice if we can get to him now, finally. I don't really think looking at the icons and the aesthetics will really change my mind too much, so if we can, let's just go straight for the Manticore armor. Hmm. By the way, I'm like on the verge of dying right now. Should probably meditate. Euphoria is really nice, but it is kind of annoying how you have to set it up every time with a toxicity. I'm not sure if there's like alchemy skills I can get so that the process is a little bit less painful. I can't imagine though, because you can get alchemy skills to increase your toxicity, the acquired tolerance and whatnot, but every single time you'll still have to take potions. Hark, Beauclerwa! Her most gracious duchess My has hired a witcher to get at the root of these murders. That's right. Every resident of our fair town is hereby required to aid the witcher in any way he requests. That's right. Ladies, Don't gentlemen, <laughs> Dupont and Sons, all manner of goods and service. I'm back. Greetings. I hope your search goes well. It did. Managed to find something already. Wonderful. I shall draft a copy. This is good. This at last will earn me the title of Grand Master. I thank That's kind of selfish. You. <laughs> You're welcome. All we had to do was come back and show him the diagram. I don't naturally have to get him to make me anything for the quest to complete. 500 crowns for all that work? Eh, I would prefer it if you made my armor for me for free. Would you craft something for me? Of course. Honestly, that's something that you definitely should be doing since nobody else could have done this for you. My gosh. Grandmaster Feline Boots. If we look at the icons here, I mean, it's all just boots, pretty much. Boots are not the most telling of the overall aesthetic, but at the very minimum, I should at least look at the armor set effects and pretend I care. Feline Boots. 3-piece bonus. Strong attacks increase fast attack damage for 5 seconds by 10% for each piece of the set. Oh, so strong attacks increase fast attack damage. What? For 5 seconds. Oh, okay, so if we do one strong attack and then fast attacks later on. If we have 6 pieces, it'll increase by 60%. Oh. Oh, but the second piece. Rear attacks deal 50% more damage, and also stun opponents at the cost of one adrenaline point. Hmm. This is more... close combat base, I guess? Feline. Griffin. After using stamina to cast a sign in its standard mode, the next sign cast within 3 seconds will be cast in standard mode without using any stamina. 6 piece. The size of the Irden traps is increased by 40%. While you are within an Irden trap, Stamina regeneration is increased by 5 per second, and sign intensity by 100%. Oh, sounds interesting. This one's more focused on signs. Size of Irden traps increasing. That would be really useful for stuff like wraiths, but I don't know why. Maybe because I'm required to, but Irden traps, I basically only ever use them for wraiths, even though technically they work for other people too. Ursine. When a Quen shield shatters, there's a chance a new one will be cast at no stamina cost. The bonus increases by 5% for each piece. Damage dealt by abilities involving the Quen sign is increased by 200. Oh, interesting, but not really relevant to me because I don't really have any Quen sign damage things anymore. The explosive shield. Woven. Up to three different oils can be applied to a sword at a time. Bombs are thrown without any delay. Eh, it seems kind of meh. Oh, how come Manticore is listed separately here? It's not considered Grandmaster for some reason? Same level though. Maybe it's because the first time I've seen it. Because there's no like previous Grandmasters, or uh, there's no previous Manticore sets. Critical hit chance and critical hit damage also apply to bombs. The maximum amount of charges for each alchemy item is increased by one. So instead of four white reference decoction, I get five. Like that? Uh. Not too impressive either. If I was basing this off effects, I might actually be more inclined to do either Griffin or Feline. Yeah, especially because Feline, this close combat, is usually what I do, although strong attacks aren't something I do that often either. 
Anyway, though, maybe let's check out the aesthetic for the chess piece. Feline. Hmm? Griffin. Oh, if we want to do these ones, we gotta bring back the previous piece, too. Which I don't have right now. Ursine. This is the one that's like a battle dress. It's kind of cool. Wolven. That's the one that we're wearing right now, is it? This one doesn't seem to require a previous one, though. I don't know why. The other ones do. Manticore armor. This one seems really close to the one that we had in The Witcher 1. Although back then, you couldn't really choose what kind of armor you could get. Okay, well... Like I said, aesthetics first. Let's go for Manticore. I don't want to think about this too much. The bonus effects set for this one is more focused on bombs and alchemy items. Not my forte, but I guess that means I'll just have to use it more often. Now I'm missing a Dimeridium plate here. Oh my god, it costs like 3,000 crowns. Can I make this myself? Would that be Dismantle or...? No, because Dismantle would be like getting a Dimeridium ore, right? So... <coughs> sorry. Maybe here? Crafting component, dimeridium plate. Dimeridium plate. Oh, there you go! Costs so much less. 300 crowns. Not sure how many we need. Maybe like five or so. But I can make a whole bunch anyway. Alright, cool. By the way, money's not an issue here at all, right? I didn't really check. No, it costs like... A thousand crowns? Nah, it's not. Okay. Manticore boots? Cool. Let me get rid of the asterisks here. And then chest armor. Manticore armor? Two thousand crowns. Crossbow? No. Level 29 was a limit. The one we have right now is from the tournament. I think it's like level 31 or so, but... Either way, that's pretty much the limit here. Gauntlets. Ma Tucson Color Guardsman's Gauntlets. 45. Well, I got some really high-level stuff here. Not what I'm looking for, though, especially if I'm going for a set. Manticore Gauntlets. What is that? Monster hair? Really? Okay. That seems kind of hardcore. Silver sword. Manticore sword? Manticore silver sword. Is that really... Wait. I have the Erendite right now. Um... The Erendite is... What is it? Is it a silver sword? <laughs> I should know this! But is it a silver sword or... A steel sword? Hello. Good luck on the path. Because I don't think I want to replace that, right? Um, yeah, it's a silver sword, and the damage increase can actually go up to a maximum of 30 now. This is something I probably want to keep, especially because this is level 46, which is a lot higher than the 40 that we're given here. Greetings. I hope you're... Would you craft something for me? Of course. So I guess we're not gonna make a manticore silver sword, but a steel sword. Would that be alright? No silver swords. Steel swords. Manticore. Oh, but if I don't have all the pieces, then I don't get the bonus. Hmm. We'll have to see. Steel sword. I mean, it's not too big of a deal, but I would like to get the bonus if I can. Especially because the three-piece bonus is not really one that I'm looking for. So I do want the six-piece one. Manticore Trousers. And then... Upgrades? What is this? Oh, that's right, I gotta do this again! Ah, oh, my least favorite part of every time upgrading. Gosh. Farewell. Good luck on the path. This is gonna be pretty different because... This armor is not dyed at all. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, wow. It really feels very Witcher 1-y, huh? But look! 
I don't get the set bonus because I only have one, two, three, four, five. Ah, the silver sword. Actually, it says that I have four pieces right now. Not even five. Does the sword not count? Oh, wait, because I didn't put it on yet. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, now it's five out of six. Uh... Well... Let me check these two. What's the difference between the one I'm using right now versus the one I just put on? The one I put on is better. Hmm. Okay, I don't think it costs too much anyway, so what I'm Great gonna tips. do is I'll craft the Manticore Silver Sword anyway. We'll try it Would out for a bit. Something for me? And then maybe we can decide later on if we want to use Erendite or the Silver Sword. Kind of a shame though, because the Erendite is so nice, but the set bonus is gone. By the way, just now, our first cutscene, seeing the armor. Very old school looking. Yeah? Look at that. Farewell. Good luck on the path. Especially when I'm all shaven, too. If I have the elven long hair, that would be very, very Witcher 1 y. Another murder by the horrid beast. Milton. Okay. Dress to kill. I guess we'll go with this for a while, but I gotta. Ugh, the, the runes and stuff, that's right. Okay, let me get back to Corvo Bianco and just maybe look through all my runes and stuff. But for the previous armor thing, I went to the Ophiri guy, right? Foes set alight by Igni explode when they die and ignite nearby foes. Yeah, okay, I'll have a look at all of that, but uh, do we want to dye this armor at all? I can check out how it looks. Mmm, I don't like this very much at all. Because the aesthetic of this armor is that the centerpiece, the chest piece, is different from the sleeve. But when you dye it, it's now the same color, so I don't really like how that looks. Um, I'll have a think about this. Okay, before I go do the rune stuff, is there anything I can do in the city? The man from Sintra... Gwent? Night for Hire? How about we do one more game of Gwent here? We're getting kind of close to the end. 15 out of 19? <laughs> well, not very close, but... I think this is the last one in Beauclair itself, though. Because the other three after this one are... in the tourney area, I think? Oh my god, there's three people in the tourney area who want to play Gwent. The armor guy, the blacksmith guy, and... some other person there. Well, one at a time. And then we can finally take on the Gwent tournament, too. That would be nice. Wow, even just looking at Geralt run around now. <laughs> it's very... It doesn't feel Grandmastery, if that makes sense. Makes me feel like I'm going back to my roots, and... It doesn't look as powerful. But is that always a bad thing? I guess not. Perfumery. Oh, we've passed by you so many times. Today's a day. We're gonna play Gwent. Did you restock? Pretty sure I took this before. <laughs> Welcome back, Master. Thank you. In the mood for a round of Gwent? Okay. I don't think we need to make any adjustments here. Wait. Clan Demon Pirate. Oh, when did I get this? Oh, I forgot to put this in my deck, right? Hold on. This is a Scorch card. We should definitely have this in here. Yeah? It doesn't even count the row. It's a pure Scorch card. Freaking put it in right now. But now our deck is getting even more bloated. Eh, whatever. Skellige versus Skellige. With the same leader ability. Decoy, Scorch, Canby, Light Longship, Muster. Shield Maiden, Shield Maiden, Clan on Prey Warrior, Type Bond, Dragon, Ermion, Ceres. If we have Ceres, then we don't need the Shield Maidens. Yes. Okay, uh, not the best trade because now I got two of these muster cards. <laughs> it's actually, I mean, I only have two, 
So the muster is kind of useless here, unfortunately. Is there any way I can take advantage of this? Maybe by using my leader ability? I don't think so. So I guess we'll just have to live with it. Oh my god. If they had Ermion, this would be kind of scary. I'm not sure what the numbers are like once they transform. I think we only saw it like one other time before too. For the young one or the normal one? I don't know. Okay. I can decoy some things back, but I don't even know what I would decoy back. Uh, Ceres is my ultimate weapon here, for sure. Commander's Horn. I have a Type Bond card here, but nothing to Type Bond it with. And nothing in my deck right now really enables me to get new cards. Uh, I don't think so. Hmm. If I want to make use of my commander's horn, which round should I use it in? Probably the round where I put this down alongside the dragon, because it's 6 and 7, as opposed to 4 and 4. Because this can be, it's going to turn into a hero card, so I can't use the commander's horn on it. Okay, how much do I want to commit this round? Let's think about this one first. Um, I'll put down Ermion maybe. Yeah. Because I don't want to put down these cards because I want to use Commander's Horn on them. But I do want to push him a little bit more. Okay. I do have a Scorch card here that I can use right now. I'm very quickly starting to run out of cards though. I'm not sure how to feel about that. Oh, I can use one of these guys here and freaking bring it back. That is an option. Um, scared about Scorch too. How about we put down this one? Oh, frick. Oh, whoa, we had two dragons. I was thinking about this too. God. Um, uh, I could put down my own dragon, but I think it's better if I use Scorch here and decoy this guy back for next round. Scorch is okay, right? I think so. Right. Yennefer, are you bringing the dragon back right away? Okay. 24, 22. It's only the first round and both of us only have four cards left. What is this? Okay, I don't... I think I uh, overextended a little bit because I, I only have two more cards with numbers now. That's kind of scary. Which makes me feel like I gotta win this round. But I can't, really. Can I? Hmm. I have to win this round. Because I can try to use Ceres for next round, but that's all I got. Yeah. Oh, that's right! I can use the Commander's Horn on the Shield Maidens. Oh, frick, no! Oh... You've gotta be joking me. Well, it seems like he's winning this round. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Things are looking really bad for me now. Hmm. I'll take this back. I completely overextended. Completely. Is it still possible for me to win this? It might be, depending on how I play this ability. Maybe? Not really. <laughs> Not really. Because the third round ability, they have it too. If we push this to a third round... Well, we have to because we lost the first one. Dang it, that's better than my Hemdal already. I do need to put something down right now, though. Like, immediately. Ooh. Oh my god. Okay, I'm in a really tough spot right now because... If I pass, 
I can't pass because if I pass and lose, you see what I mean? Like, oh, this is okay, right? If I do this. I have to save something for the third round, because otherwise I won't have a single card at all. I know it's a waste to use this commander's horn now, but I'd rather use that than this, because if I'm left with a commander's horn next round, that's nothing. But now I'm thinking ahead here. Can I use my leader ability to um, restrict anything? Don't think it's a good idea at this point, because I only have one card that's bring backable. So I'll just pass. Oh, I don't need to think anymore, actually, because they have zero cards. Oh, this is such a tight win! Wait, 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 we haven't won yet. Oh, miraculously! <laughs> the same cards were brought back. But I got this up my sleeve. Oh! Oh my god! This was a really, really close one. And I feel like we only won because they were Skellige too. Holy crap. Ooh! Scary, scary. 100 crowns and what? Light Longship. Oh! Is that for my muster? So now my Light Longship is probably just as good as my Gondor Dim. That's pretty good. Have I ever been up here before? Oh, you got a nice place here. It's a perfumery. Okay, cool, cool. Anything else I can do in the vicinity? Oh, collect my pay from the night guy? Right down here. I think somebody mentioned that the yes, night no Carmer Lango guy is also the person who I can sell books to. The third cries out for a man. For me to know. And those who were in fresh graves thrown, slowly march to lands unknown. It is the Witcher who saved us from woe. Say, be you Rafix of Forhorn. On your victory in the tourney, I congratulate you. The There's a lot of people here today. The bandits disbanded. Long live Sir Geralt! Mm, so that was the last Hansa's, and there's no more. Greetings, Knight. I've heard reports of feats of great bravery. Thus, please accept this reward for your dedication, sir. 500 crowns? Cool. Wouldn't mind a glance at your books. Ones you're willing to sell, that is. Oh, you sell books, too. Do you have anything that I haven't read before? I can see I sold you some junk already, previously. <laughs> Quite a few. Alps, History of the Fortress of Duntine, duh, 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 duh. Gwent, a history. Now, we'll save this for later on, because maybe we'll run into them sometime. Hmm. Slizzards. Fall of Hubert Blast. Protofelder. Hmm, huh, this one seems like it could be interesting. Hellhounds, Harbingers of the End. A Fire and Stone. A Code Duello. I'll give this one, maybe. The Proto Felder. I assume it's kind of like learning how vampires were created. Oh, yeah, that's right. We gotta go back to Kovro Bianco so we can put up all the paintings, too. Oh, what? Wait. Oh, no, no. I can, I can sell these. That's right. Okay, cool. Where's the one I just bought? I don't want to accidentally sell it. Mm, it's not this one. <laughs> but you can have it, too, if you want. I don't mind. Have it all. All of it. This guy's not that rich though, so we should be a tad careful here. Razor. Copper, salt, and shake peppers. Rotten teeth. <laughs> Mugs and stuff. You think it's all junk? But look, we've already taken 200 crowns from him. This is not garbage. It all adds up. Yep, skull. Look, at this rate, we're gonna be taking all of his money. Completely. Anyway, though, I'm actually here to sell books, not this. 
So, can I sell this stuff? Yes. Oh no! <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have sold him so much junk! Oh, frick. Dang though, we freaking read so much here. Look at how far I can scroll down. I think it's because all of those books were a combination of Hearts of Stone plus Blood and Wine, so there was really quite a lot to read here. Unfortunately though, this guy doesn't have any more money, so there's really not too much I can do about this. Unless if I buy a book from him, maybe then I can sell some more? Is there anything I'm actually interested in learning about though? Slizzards? Ducal Chronicle. Kiki Moors. The Insidious Insectoids. A fire and stone. This one sounds mysterious. Fine. Okay, maybe now I can sell a few more. Not the paintings though. Just the books I've read before. It's actually kind of cool because you can see his stock filling up with my old books. He has those books too. Oh, that gave him so much money! How much are these books worth? My gosh. Okay, cool, cool. Magic mirror shard. Have some more of my junk then, since you can afford it. And there you go. Okay, thank you. Well, see you later. Go in peace for a night. Mm -hmm. The books we bought. Forgotten species, the protofelder. If you take a fletter and magnify all of its most primitive traits, you will get a protofelder. This beast, the fletter's distant ancestor, arrived here from a parallel sphere centuries past, yet, unlike the fletter, has remained untouched by any post conjunction evolutionary processes. In our time, protofelders. Oh, it's fletters. Was I saying felders this whole time? <laughs> are extremely rare. The more suitably adapted fletters having taken over their niche in our biosphere. Protofletters are thus lesser vampires. Their massive, wide jaws constitute their main weapons, their sharp claws coming in a close second. Similarly to their more developed cousins, protofletters rely on their instincts rather than intelligence and are quite sensitive to the scent of blood. All the usual means of fighting vampires, such as vampire oil, black blood, and silver weapons apply to them as well. Hmm, this is a good book to have brushed up on, especially because we seem to be dealing with vampires in the main story. Wanna know something that'll make you angry once you notice it, though? There's a space here that they forgot to take out. <laughs> of fire and stone. Sphera Mundi is divided into four elemental planes. The plane of earth, the plane of water, the plane of air, and the plane of fire. Earth and water together form our planet, around which circulates air. Above air stretches the aether. Fiery air, or in short, fire. Past fire lie the subtle, sidereal heavens known collectively as firmamentum, which are of a spherical nature. That is where the erratica sidera, drifting stars and fixa sidera, fixed stars, reside. The elemental planes are inhabited by creatures which can be summoned by use of magic. They are gnomes, sylphs, salamanders, and audinates all of which belong to the category commonly known as Elementa, Elementum in the singular. We, I've never heard of any of these before, aside from Salamanders, but we've never seen that in The Witcher before either. Did we actually get some new bestiary entries? Oh, I forgot to take away the thing. No! Vampires. Garcanes? Hey, protofletters! We actually- oh god, that means this is gonna come up later on. It's a separate thing! As opposed to... non proto -fletters. Ugh. It's giant. It's bigger. Never seen a vampire like that in my life, Geralt of Rivia, Witcher. Protofletters are relatives of fletters which came from the world of the higher vampires to our own during the conjunction of the spheres. The members of this species are characterized by their considerable strength and agility, as well as the strange glow they emit, a trait most likely tied to their otherworldly nature. Protofletters have never had significant contact with the outside world, having spent their entire time on our planet in the Unseen Elder's Cave, whose atmosphere is very similar to that of their home world. 
Oh, this is definitely gonna come up later on. Garcanes, the one with the big brains. Blood on the ceiling, guts on the walls, must be a Garcane. Garcanes, like flutters, belong to the class of particularly dangerous vampires whose strength exceeds even that of fiends. An encounter with one of their number almost always ends in death, which is why there are not many eyewitness accounts of them. From the city guard, reports written up in Latin Exeter describing the attacks committed in that city in 1104 by three Garcanes, later killed by a certain Olivier of Gullet, Witcher. It seems these horrible monsters do not content themselves with the drinking of the blood of their victims. The investigators concluded from the blood and guts strewn around the crime scenes that Garcanes tear their victims to shreds with great delight and muck about in their bloody entrails. Garcanes belong to the group of creatures known as lesser vampires. They often gather around themselves members of other subspecies of lesser vampires, like flutters, acting in such situations as leaders of the pack. They are by and large unable to run, but can jump a great distance and often attack their prey in that way. During combat, they usually keep their distance from their foes, trying to incapacitate them using a blast of mental energy, provoking visions that beguile and disorient. Before grappling a Garcane, one should drink the Black Blood Potion and stock up on Vampire Oil. It should also be remembered that the Samum and Moondust Bombs are always effective weapons against any mental attacks. Moon does is effective against mental attacks, really? But basically, vampires are all dealt with the same way, similar ways. Vampire oil, black blood, yada yada yada. Why do I still have a... Oh, there we go. Was wondering about the asterisk. Okay, that's it then. I could go back to Corvo Bianco now, but is there anything else I should do in the city? Spontaneous Profits! Oh, that's right! The treasure hunt quest that we got from the place with the white. It's right next to the Gwent tournament though, so I guess we can go there at the same time as other stuff? Okay... Yeah, I could go back to Corvo Bianco at this moment, but I kind of want to um, go around exploring other stuff first too. Wine Wars... Oh! God, I forgot about Wine Wars, we gotta... <laughs> There's so much to do! Okay. Okay, tell you what, why don't we go... Wait. Aside from Wine Wars, what do we actually have here? Are we getting to the end again? Like, actually? Because if we look at the quests, secondary quests, Gwent, Gwent, Wine Wars, Night for Hire, these are all, like, not actual quests. Well, not that they're not real quests, but they're more like question mark quests, if you know what I mean. Oh my god, are we actually getting close to the end here? It's kind of a scary thought. <laughs> okay, well, no matter what, we've got to get around to all of these things sometime, so might as well make it now, I guess. It is right and fitting. If I want to get to a fast travel point, that would be right here. It, whoa. And I guess we'll aim for the Bell Guard stuff. I still remember the treasure hunt thing. We didn't get to this either, so if we're in the area, it would definitely be nice to get to. The Bell Guard Wine Wars. Night for hire? Night for hire. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's start off with the cemetery. Which Regis shouldn't be at, because he's still waiting for Deadlaugh in the house. Supposedly, anyway. I'm sure by this point, they're probably... They've probably talked already. But we won't know until we actually go and find Regis and talk about it. Okay. Wine Wars, Belgard. I gotta make some time to go back to Novigrad, too, before we go to the end here, because I think there were a few smaller things. Someone very kindly, a while ago in the comments, compiled a list of all the little small things I missed, so it would be nice if we could go back to them. Heck, maybe we'll do it once we get to the Wine War stuff around here. Hmm. Wait, this isn't really walkable. We should be taking Roach here. And since we're taking Roach, 
we should try out the other blinders too. This one's got horns. <laughs> okay. The days pass. The pile of Am I wait? <laughs> I was supposed to be following the actual quest marker, but I was going back to the green one instead. What the heck was the point of fast traveling then? God. Oh my god. Okay. Let's just take it away. I gotta turn back. That's what go, I thought. Go. I was like, how come it's getting more and more city looking? And I didn't think the question mark was that far away. Gosh. Okay, Belgard Vineyard. Every day the same. Which is now co-managed by Liam and... Oh, I forgot the woman's name. But it's nice. They're taking care of it together now, supposedly. Oh god. This is gonna be our first time trying out the Manticore weapons here. Oh. Golden Oriole. No. Oh god. I don't have Euphoria though, so we can't really accurately compare between the old sword and, and the new sword. Show me what you got. God. Damn. Oh, this is actually kind of scary. I should probably stop tanking all the damage and maybe fight. God, I'm actually gonna die here. It probably doesn't help that right now, on my armor, I don't have, like, a single rune, or glyph, or anything. But I'm getting lazier and lazier about it. Hmm. The Manticore armor is nice, but I do miss how nice the red armor we had before looked. Gotta blow this up if I want to get rid of the Endrigas. Not sure what kind of color scheme I want to go for this one. Maybe we'll just leave it at this, or... Is there another color scheme that would look nice? I don't know. If you have suggestions, feel free to let me know. Theory... Pyres' journal. I'm not saying that right, am I? Only latest entries legible. Remaining pages stuck together with dried blood. I cursed every day I had to grovel and toil for Count Cresby. Now I curse every day I cannot serve him. Now I know why he was so harsh, so domineering, so quick to anger. One cannot remain calm and good-natured when so many troubles crop up every day in one vineyard. Now I, a steward of Belgard, must deal with each of them. The geologist the Count hired before his tragic death has disappeared. With him went the hefty sack of crowns we sent him, and the study we had hired him to complete. Tilly Field is invested with giant centipedes, and a breathless page just ran up to inform me. Something's attacked the northern vines. Enough writing. I'm off to see what all the panic's about. Oh man, and that was the last thing he saw. These vineyard infestations. Definitely a big problem here. Multiple people died. And actually, rather than the people being the problem... We... Uh, I... I... Thank you. Well done. Yeah. No. You need but stick out your hand to be kissed, lift up your bum to make way for a cushion. Rather than the people dying being the biggest problem, I think the fact that this section of vineyard can't grow anything anymore is a big one too. Not that, you know, wine or grapes or whatever is more important than people, but if you think about it like in terms of jobs or production quantity, and the economy, <laughs> then it could end up being pretty bad overall. Okay, the other Belgard problems are down here, but um, I think it would be worth it if we try to go back to this right now. This is the one where the escape artist was trying to get out of the prison, but I don't really get why they were doing that. I think my running theory was that somebody was hiring them to figure out escape routes from prisons so that they can be clogged up so that people can't escape. 
But I'm not sure if that was really the real reason. Whoa there, Roach. The guy was definitely hired by somebody though. Oh, here we are, the cemetery again. In morning time, so not as scary. No? No? What is that? I don't know. There's a cave here. Underwater? Well, like, is it just underwater? Oh, wow! Oh, yeah, I think we were here before, right? And then we just never went into the cave itself? Do I need killer whale for this? Maybe. Where is it? The goods. I need the goods. The crowns are nice. <laughs> right here. Dies. Hey, there was a sword called the Striga. Give me all of that. Thank you. Oh, Geralt, please go up now. Ooh, that was a close one. Oh, it's a very, very small little cavern here. And there's dead people that I didn't realize were here. I wonder if there was some kind of global warming happening in the Witcher world too. Because these sunken places, they weren't sunken before, were they? I don't think we have that kind of technology yet, right? Being able to live underwater. Then again, I don't really know because we have the presence of magic and all here. I want to look at the sword, but let's wait until I get back on the surface here. No! No! I'm sorry! No! Don't touch me! Thank you. We never got a chance to look into the prison area over there on the aisle. I think it was called Crane Isle, but I'm hoping that's a place that we'll get to during the main quest, just like the Duntine Castle, which we weren't allowed to enter. Arendite. The Striga! It's level 40! Not much worse than what I have right now. Hmm. Just wondering if there is any good runes that I can just stick on my sword right here. But these are probably not the best ones I have right now. The best ones I have are back at Corvo Bianco, a stash. We have a lot of armor die though. Hey, I wonder, is it possible to armor dye the Beauclair doublets and stuff? No, it's not. Just the Witcher armor, or maybe armor in general, because this isn't really armor here. Hmm, okay. Okay. What else is around? Question mark? Bellguard? Waiting for Go and Do. Oh, this is another one of those treasure hunts that I didn't get around to completing. Okay, let's check out the next bell guard problem around here then. Is it gonna be a vineyard infestation or somebody getting kidnapped? There's people here. Oh no, my favorites. My favorites! I haven't seen you, but I know what you are already. I actually thought it might have been Arcus Force, but it's a giant centipede. Oh, look at the damage difference! Without Euphoria, and with Euphoria. It's huge. Oh, and look at how annoying this is, once we can't kill it quickly. You know, if we're not gonna freaking get back to Corvo Bianco right now, maybe it's better for me. It's more efficient if I actually just switch back to my old armor. 
And maybe the Erendite was a better sword in general. I don't know. It's hard to judge exactly because my memory of the Erendite involves Euphoria. But right now, I'm not really using it. I should really try to get back to doing that so I can at least test them properly. Gregory Pickside. Dear Sir, I trust this letter finds you in good health. As per our earlier correspondence, I would like to commission from you a geological survey to use in determining in which location we shall find the most fitting soil for expanding our vineyard's acreage. Acreage. I suspect my messenger has already given you your retainer. As a final matter, I'd like to warn you against putting too much faith in the rumors which various beggars and vagrants have been spreading through our community in the last weeks. We in this area do not have any problems with giant centipedes or monsters of any sort, and you may begin your work at once with no need to fear. I wish you success and eagerly await the results of your survey. Count Vladimir Crespi. Wow! And that's what's left of the geological survey guy. This Count Crespi... He's dead already, but he sounds like he was a real character. One of the guys who don't really care too much about the lives of other people, and just prophets and themselves. Much like the Cooper's Guild. Yeah, the people who are sending the merchants to death with a silver basilisk. Hmm. Huh. Thought there might have been a cave here, but that's it. Okay. How about we continue heading eastward? This one? This one? And then I'm hoping we can get back to a fast travel point. Oh, but there's still a few question marks here, but I'm probably not gonna get around to it today. Let's focus on stuff like the wine wars, so we can at least get rid of it. Okay. Why don't we put on some actual potions here? Mm-hmm. Are there any more that I haven't used at all? Reliefers? Increased damage dealt and decreases damage taken against wraiths? Very specific. Oh. If I'm gonna take some potions, might as well meditate a little bit first. Get back my swallow potions and all. Okay. Ekimara. Wraith. Sure. Catechin. Chort. Sure. Oh god, I overdid it. <laughs> I overdid it, didn't I? Am I losing health? Oh, am I... Actually, I'm not losing any health right now. I wonder why. Because usually, by this point, in terms of toxicity percentage. Isn't that about time when I start losing health? No. No, 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 I'm following the green one. Gotta pay attention here. If I'm losing health from toxicity, is it possible to counteract it with Golden Oriole? Gilenser's farm. Come on now. New fast travel point. Old man Gilenser grew radishes. Yes, radishes. Not grapes, not olives, not even beets. As he himself put it, Dad gum it! I can't very well live on bread and wine alone now, can I? Old man Gilenser did not found a radish empire. The history of his line is not filled with amazing legends. He lived, sired children, planted radishes, and died. Oh, Lebiota, give us all such a common, simple life. Here, here. Run, Roach. But nowadays, it's not him here anymore, right? Because the guy, he died already. Are his descendants still living here? Hey! Alps! Good thing I didn't buy it earlier. In the course of my research into Brooksay, I have stumbled upon certain inconsistencies that in no way correspond with what we already know about these dangerous vampires. My investigations have revealed that these seemingly erroneous accounts were in fact describing an Alp, not a Bruxa. It is an extraordinary discovery. 
a true milestone in the classification of these monsters. Even though legends tell of these vampires turning into pitch black hounds or venomous toads, personally, I do not believe an elf is capable of such polymorphy. However, it is almost certain that, similar to a Bruxa, an elf may transform itself into a beautiful woman. This ability allows a species to blend seamlessly into crowds. To think that I may have passed by such a monster completely unawares, fascinating. One of the fundamental differences between Alps and Bruxae is their fighting style when in the form of a vampire. Alps also possess the ability to turn into fog, which allow them to move noiselessly and attack by surprise. Most likely, this is the root of the name common folk have given them, Fleetlings. As far as I'm concerned, both of these are equally disgusting. Not my cup of tea. Kiki Moors! Hey, we're stumbling upon a gold mine here. Person here likes to learn. Lots of books. Truths and myths about the insidious insectoids. Observation has shown that Kiki Moors are the most organized and hierarchical of the post conjunction insectoids. Their workers follow the orders of warriors. They are all subjects of the queen which seems to control the behavior of all members of the swarm, even though she remains hidden deep in the ground. Considering the small size of this species' cerebral ganglia, which functions as a brain, one may hypothesize that Kikimors possess a sort of hive mind, making them similar to ants. Kind of reminds me of another book we read a while back. Something about, like, arachno... arachno-communism or something? You could make yourself useful. It was talking about some other insect stuff, too. Okay. It is a quiet place here. But that was good, because we found some books that we otherwise would have had to buy. What is that? Is that Prophet Leviota? Yes. Hmm. They really do love him. Does a snake keep its paws? <laughs> that's... That's a good question. I don't know. Let me know when you find out. <laughs> Cave entrance here. Go, go. Another Vintner's contract. Some evil's afoot in that cave. It's made its lair there. It's swallowed fill and hole. I'm at 94% toxicity, and I'm not losing a bit of health at all. Seriously, I'm not sure why. Oh, there, sir. I guess those swords on your back aren't there as festoons. Maybe you could help me. Maybe. Depends. Well, there's a cave that, to my mind, would be splendid for aging wine. Not over dry, and none too moist. But? Well, damn thing's full of noise. The arse clenching sort, clinkety, bangity, knockety kind. Sent McClark in to see, been two days, and he's not back. I reckon it's ought to do with the elven ruins. Blah. That about the cave. So, lend us a hand, will you? I'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Could help, provided you can pay. Yeah, I'll, uh, halfway, halfway. Mm, yes, we're almost there. Oh, you cheapskates! Agreed. Fine. I'll have a look in the cave, see what lurks there. Cleaning those hard to reach places. <laughs> that sounds kind of. Alright. Great grotto. Since our toxicity is so high right now, this would be a good chance to really test out the Manticore sword. Whoa. That's a gargoyle. Do you want to attack me or Ugly bastard. Oh, I thought we could talk because its health bar didn't seem to want to come up. Was it a lamenta oil for you? Oh, frick, man, the potions we have. This is a cakewalk now. I'm not sure what combination I did to get 94% and have health not decreasing, but whatever I did, I should keep doing it. Clearly. Sp 
Especially since gargoyles used to pose so much of a problem for me. Because they're all rocky and stuff. But now, even when they hit me, I hit them back and my health comes back. Gosh. These potions. And that's it. Anything I want in the water? Uh, a vein of ore, a chest. Two sun armor. Gold nuggets? Don't mind if I do. But yeah, that's pretty much it here. Silver! Alright. Very, very fast contract. It's the difference between having the ability to do something and not. Very quick for me, but for those normal people. Well, they're not witchers, is all I can say. Alright. Is it over? Is it done? All clear now? Did you manage it? Yeah, all taken care of. Ha! <laughs> and four core witches lay about some freeloaders? Bollocks! Storehouse will be ready in two days at most. And here on in, you've cut rate prices on all my goods. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably not gonna come back. <laughs> not from around here, are you? Nay, from Povis we are. Wandered south for the climb before the first war. Chills up north were giving me wifey lumbago. <laughs> lumbago? How did you tell? His accent? Well, you got on offer. Wouldn't mind a glance. Not too much. Wine, obviously. <laughs> okay, cool. So long. Hit me up if you need more contracts fulfilled. Alright, that is another job well done. For the famous Witcher Geralt of Rivia! Clearing random storehouses of gargoyles. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder, are these kinds of jobs really fitting for the Great White Wolf? We're such a famed Witcher, supposedly, but here we are, doing all sorts of menial work for money. I wouldn't say it's demeaning or anything, but it just seems kind of like, if I'm so famous, then people should be giving me more, like, better work. Well-paying work, I suppose. But maybe we can think of it as Geralt not really minding it all that much. 